Hey guys, I just got to Costa Mesa Country Club and I'm gonna meet with my main man, Brian Manzella. I've been a huge fan for years. Golf Digest Top 25 teacher and he is going to show me some amazing things that you're not gonna see anywhere else. Come on. You're watching the Over the Top Miracle Swing. All right, man, you ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. Guys. All right, I need some help with my golf swing. And... I've been doing it for 40 years. You're just another, just another guy. Wow. <laughs> trying to get better, and you know what? There's a long way. What, what did Ben Hogan say? He said that the, the average golfer, he meant you and me. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, didn't, he wasn't scared of you and me. Should, can't wait to get up, should not be able to wait to get up in the morning because there's a whole day you can improve. Right, right, right. And, and uh, in my experience, in, until the man upstairs takes you away or uh -huh. old age gets you, I've seen people play their best golf in their early 70s. That's... That have played more or less their whole life. Wow. So, um, can I tell you a funny story? Tell me a funny story. Okay, so I I've been playing Hogan Blades this sure. whole evolution for 14 years. Right. And It probably helped you get from point A to where you're standing at point B. Probably helped. I had the biggest game improvement irons before that. That probably hurt you. And and that's what I did was I was like, you know, I'm going to go back to, you know, something, you know, blade style, whatever, but it made me narrow my focus. No doubt about it. Two, three weeks ago, my friend John, who's a pro, he's like, why don't you get yourself some tech? I play my <laughs> seven iron from 165 yards with my Hogan blades. Not anymore. It's 15 yards for a guy like, like you and, and probably 12 for I got a little bit less club head speed because I'm a little older, but it's 12 yards. And and so uh, the, the 790 TaylorMades, I, uh, I play with the 225 Mizunos. Uh -huh. um, I have a set of blades in my studio and I hit them just perfectly fine. And the problem is I can't give up the 15 yards and that's on a, that's on a good strike. What happens? If I hit that blade like this much on the toe, it goes like 18, 19 yards shorter. So it's, it's, you're not just fitting a set of clubs to somebody for their best shot, but the game that they're playing, it's not like I get to practice and play every day. So I hit some pretty good shots on the golf course with less than perfectly centered strikes because I've got a club like basically the Bazuno version of that, that gives me some level of forgiveness and hotness off of a non sweet spot strike but club fitting modern club fitting is so far advanced it's hard to trick this orange box or the yeah. quad did so you it, did you ever get to have any of mr hogan's clubs in your hand yes yeah i did i remember i was on hogan's staff for one year Wow, after Mr. that's Hogan, awesome. After Mr. Hogan passed. And so I got to meet uh, Mr. Sheely and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. So anyway, long story short, I'm at the place and they say, hey, Brian, do you want to come see Mr. Hogan's office? Yeah. So I walk in and, and there's a set of clubs in the corner mm -hmm. with, a, with a very high tech looking putter. Like it had a, like a gooseneck and a little alignment aid. It was like, whoa. And anyway, so here's the clubs and I'm looking in the bag like this. Right? I don't want to touch. So, no, no, you can touch them. So I, I, I held it like this, like it was like I was in a museum. You know? and said, <laughs> no, you, you, can, you can put your hands on it. So I'll never forget, it was a, uh, it was a driver. Because I, I looked at it, when I got it about right here, I went, I thought about my dad, who, who introduced me to golf. He hated bulge and roll. And I went, my, my, my dear old dad is looking at this club right now, going, let me hit this thing. Because he had no bulge and roll on his driver. It was just zoom. Because bulge and roll helps you on, especially persimmon, Toe hits and heel hits started to the right time. He, he wasn't hitting it that far out of the toe either. <laughs> he so, didn't miss so, anything. So anyway, I, I, I'm thinking about this, and I, I don't realize I've already put my hands on the club comfortable, mm -hmm. right? It had that big old deck that shoelace. Reminder. When I put my hands down, it looked just like the book. Uh huh. It looked exactly, and I went, Dick Tracy, look at that. I heard about it, you know, it was twisted so yeah. the left hand would be so-called neutral and the right hand would be a little bit weak. 
and uh, they looked to me like they had been, because I started in the club repair business when I was 20 years old, like they had been beat flat because that's how Hogan and Ping bends their clubs. They don't grab the head and bend the hosel. They grab the hosel and bang the head. So it looked like probably Mr. Hogan had banged it flat and open. Mm -hmm. And they were very flat and very open. And I went, mm -hmm. and, I, and I waggled it and it was probably a 135 gram double X. And I was like, <laughs> okay. But the, the point is, right, that he hated game improvement clubs. But I think if he would have lived to be a old, old, old man and would have been around for some of these clubs that he would have, he would have had some degree of acceptance for the clubs that look like clubs, but still performed. And that, that to him, that wouldn't have, when he looked down, this was one of his, I, I thought I had, uh, yeah, I got my Jacob's 3D airplane here that we, mm -hmm. that we made and John Ortega, who's hosting it here and you've done yeah. some, you know, uh, you, you bet, John. This is a, a club that he wasn't particularly fond of, right? The Hogan Edge. Right. But the company did well with they it. They sold a ton of it. Right. Them. And and that club looks a lot less like a golf club to, that Ben yeah. Hogan would have liked. Look at the difference in the size. Uh huh. So I think he would have liked the um, the 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 modern semi game improvement club a little bit more than the the, the ones that were around when. when I he think was he wanted to be cutting edge. There's he no, he no was not it. messing around like he was a hybrid like working on hybrids in the '60s. Yeah, I saw I saw one of them. It was you know like kind of aluminum looking. Yeah. So and, he and, and, and and you know he had a putter. I don't know if you ever heard this story. He had a putter that he putted like this with. Like kind of like hand? yeah, split hand, a little long, and he goes you know every year to Seminole play with Mr. Harmon, get ready for the Masters. And the, the way I hear the story, and I, I know. Uh, Bill Harmon, I'm sure if he watches this, he could correct me if I got it wrong, because I like to get my stories correct. But like he was shooting 64 every day at Seminole with his putter, making everything. Like, uh -huh. the, like, like when he was young, because he was a really good putter. People don't know that yeah. when he was young. And Bobby Locke thought he was the best putter on tour besides him. That's <laughs> saying something. Yeah, and 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 uh, so, you know, uh, I'm just guessing the rest of this part until they get to Augusta. I guess Claude must have been thinking. You know, Claude the first, not, not, yeah. not Butch. He's gonna, he's gonna go, he's gonna surprise somebody over there. Now he's gonna like maybe win this tournament. You know, I think this was when he was already kind of on the way, on the way down because of the putting. And he gets there and he sees Ben on the practice putting green with his regular left putter. Uh huh. And he goes, Ben, what, what the hell? You were making everything with that. I can't let these people see me with that. <laughs> So he had, he had a little pride, a lot, a lot more than a little. A lot, a more, lot more. A lot yeah, more that more. is so crazy. Old PGA pros, they had this much simpler kind of wisdom. Guys, I've created the biggest controversy in modern golf by insisting swinging over the top is the best way to swing a golf club. The entire golf industry is trying to teach people to go the opposite way, and I think that's terrible. First of all, the greatest champions from the past all swung over the top. Golfers like Bobby Jones, Sam Snead, and Arnold Palmer all took the club back to the inside and swung over the top. You just have to learn to do it the correct way and you will hit the most powerful shots you've ever hit in your life. I guarantee it. Still TT. <laughs> Thank you, man. So I want to send you three free lesson videos that will teach you the over the top miracle swing that I teach my students. I shot a 72 at Balboa. It feels like you can't miss.